Hi, this is Lucas, and uh, what we've got here today is a uh, South Bend 10 inch. It's the light 10, it's the 10K. It's a real nice old lathe, in really good shape. Uh, I'll uh, fire this up here so uh, we can take a look at how, how well everything works. Uh, right now, it's going to have the uh, outboard de uh, gear system uh, disconnected, so it's actually uh, just to show how quiet this is. So you can almost not hear it running. It's uh, it's just that quiet, and it's actually not bad when the uh, uh, when the gear set is engaged. We'll uh, close these down, run this up, and I'm going to show a cut here on a piece of metal. It's a piece of steel, and uh, probably taking about an eighth of an inch off the diameter. Uh, I'll show that here. So now we can hear the uh, the all the mechanisms that drive the lead screw. And I'll uh, tighten this up and uh, I'm going to move the camera and take a peek here. So that's the, uh, that's the lathe in operation and uh, we're taking a very uh, deep chip, uh, relatively good feed rate on the uh, on the carriage as well, so uh, it's actually functioning quite well. So some of the things I'm going to turn this off here. Some of the things I want to mention about the lathe: it's a 110 volt single phase machine, so uh, it's uh, it runs on ordinary household current. Uh, it seems to be very well maintained. Uh, I did. Uh, uh, I mean, obviously, from the quietness of the uh, headstock, we could expect that everything is nice and tight on it internally. Uh, the back gear system works. Uh, that uh, that just uh, went into engagement there. There's a pin that has to be pulled out here when you uh, do engage the back gear. Uh, I can show that running a little bit later, but uh, let's do that now. That's back gear. There's no uh, no brakes on any of the uh, on any of the teeth on the uh, gearing system here. So sometimes these gears will. Uh, will uh, end up being damaged. Uh, typically these one of these gears or one of these two and there, none of the, there's no no issue with them. It is a flat belt drive. There's a quick release lever over on the side of the of the cabinet and then you reach into the, uh, the lower compartment to change the speed, which is actually uh, not as bad of a, uh, a chore as you might think. Just drop that to the next smaller pulley on whichever side you, you're uh, gonna run on. It. Then uh, so it's a one and a half by eight thread per inch spindle. So it's a threaded spindle. It's got a three jaw chuck. It's going to come with a quick change tool post and five holders. I've got four of them here. The only one that's not here is a boring bar, but we'll go over that in a minute. Uh, it's got a quick change gearbox. It's got the factory stand. It's got a graduated tailstock, which was something that uh, uh, only some of the uh, the tool room lathes would have uh, come with. So it's got this uh, collar here on the uh, on the tail stack. Uh, it's got good ways. The ways appear to be in really good shape. It's got a collet set and draw bar. Let's uh, just briefly talk about the factory stand. Uh, the factory stand has uh, the motor compartment over there, the, uh, the belt uh, release on the far side of the cabinet, but then these three drawers uh, storage, of course, is a very helpful thing. The lead screw on this lathe is in great shape. So it doesn't appear that this uh, lathe was used for uh, a great deal of threading. Uh, this area, of course, would have been less likely to be used, but we'll, uh, we'll pop this out and uh, move this down a little bit, and we can see what the, uh, what the ways look like in the lead screw. So uh, the lead screw looks great, even uh, under this area where uh, you know more threading would have been likely to uh, have been done. The lead screw looks really good, as does uh, as do I should say the ways here. So the ways are uh, in in good shape. There there was uh, flaking on them. Uh, the lathe is probably 60 years old, so it's not a surprise that some of the flaking's gone. But uh, they're in good shape. There's very few nicks to the. Uh, to the ways. There's three prismatic ways on this lathe and one flat way. The flat way is on the inside of the front there. Uh, the uh, I'll, I'll try to show a later uh, video with the uh, spindle run out. 
on it, but the spindle run out uh, looks very good. And uh, I'm just going to spin this again so you can just see uh, how how accurate that uh, that chuck is. So I will say that yes, we did turn this part on this lathe, but I actually turned this part on another lathe uh, behind me, and uh, it looks uh, it looks like there's very little run out in that part of the uh, part of the uh, uh, workpiece there so the the chuck is actually quite accurate so over here are the uh, some of the accessories that are actually all the accessories that are come with the lathe going to come with it um, it's got uh, as I mentioned the uh, collet set so this is uh, going from 1 16th to 9 16 by 16 so there's nine nine collets they're all in very good condition uh, there's not a lot of marks on them uh, the draw bar it's the original draw bar uh, that appears to be in great shape. The threads are uh, really good on it. Uh, it's got one tool holder, but this is the old style tool holder, which would have been used with this uh, with this rocker. Uh, not too many people, especially given the uh, uh, commonality now of the quick change tool posts and the cheapness of them, would want to go back to this. But it is in there for uh, uh, for completeness. It's got a very nice uh, Jacobs drill chuck and a number two Morse taper tailstock. So uh, that's going to pop right into the tailstock, and this uh, drill chuck's in great, great shape. Uh, these are three of the four uh, tool holders. There's a knurling tool, a cutoff tool, and there's actually two uh, standard tool holders, rectangular tool holders, and it will have a boring bar holder as well. It's got a, a chuck wrench. Uh, over here we got uh, what amounts to really a homemade uh, steady rest. And this steady rest is actually really well built. Uh, it's got a bolt that goes through it, and this looks like an original uh, self-bend underway lug for holding the steady rest down. So the steady rest uh, may look a little clumsy, but actually I think it's uh, quite effective. Uh, I mentioned it's got uh, one live center in the tail stack over there, and then uh, there's two dead centers here. And actually this one will fit right in the uh, half-inch collet, and then uh, you can use this as the... Uh, the dead center for the headstock for uh, between center turning. Uh, the dimensions on the lathe, I think I mentioned it's a 10 inch lathe. Uh, it has about 24 inches between centers. Uh, we pop that uh, actually longer live center out of there. Uh, we can just show how a, a smaller center would, uh, would fit in there. So. Uh, this would be a standard length center. And then uh, we can pop that chuck off and in there put, the, put this system with the uh, draw bar on the far end. And by the way, uh, I'll show how, how good a shape that, uh, that spindle uh, happens to be in what shape it is. It's, it's very nice. So first we'll pop this. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to leave the uh, workpiece right in there just because it's uh, located down in the chuck. But let's take a look at the spindle socket and uh, the spindle threads. So the socket actually has on it a, a keyway for the, uh, which is right here, a key, I should say, not a keyway, but it's a key for the uh, collets. It's got this key. Uh, this happens to be just a little oil in here, and uh, everything is in really nice shape. I'll, I'll throw this collet uh, in there. Uh, maybe we should put the draw bar in too. There, that's that's located now. These are the six. No, I can't recall. They're six K, I think they're called. Or six S, maybe. It's for South Bend. So whatever the uh, the designation was for this, uh, they're the six size collets, and uh, that's now in there. And we can clear that up. So this is the port end, and there's a little bit of, uh, actually this guard probably just need. yeah, there we go. This guard just needs to be adjusted a little bit. It's riding against the uh, the draw bar right here, but we can take care of that. We can again see how quiet this is. And of course, uh, we also have reverse on this, so that's a good thing. Uh, catalog number. I don't know if I can read it without my uh, cheaters here. Let's get those. Yeah, 
and I'm probably not going to pick it up on camera, but it's a CL8370ZD. So uh, 8370ZD, bed length three and a half. So uh, that's the length of the bed, but of course between the centers is going to be somewhat less than that. I'm guessing it's at least 24 inches uh, between centers. I can throw a tape on it in a little bit. So anyway, that's the uh, that's what the lathe is going to come with. That's uh, what kind of condition it's in. It does have a new uh, crossfeed screw and nut. There's almost no backlash in this. Everything is really solid. And uh, as we could see when we were cutting this piece, uh, we had a fairly good step on that. And the finish, surface finish, is actually quite good. Uh, I mean, this is uh, extremely good for a uh, what amounted to a pretty pointed tool so I think if one had a little larger radius on the on the tool that that would uh, make a difference uh, the finish maybe even improve it somewhat over that uh, here's the tool uh, this is how quickly and easily they came off of this tool post and uh, you, you can put uh, two tools in here if the tooling is short enough and then you can uh, even in, in one of these holders get uh, a facing and a uh, uh, traverse turning as it were tool for the uh, in in one of these holders or you can put a facing one in the in the other holder so very nice setup uh, this is going to be on Craigslist in the, in Minneapolis Minnesota uh, in, this is March of 2012 so oh I should point out too that uh, not only does the uh, uh, there, not only does the uh, crossfeed uh, does the traverse work under power but we can set this up here too and uh, engage this and we'll see that the uh, crossfeed works as well. Tighten up the clutch. If we put it in a neutral position we get threading. Everything works great on it. And in fact, I'm going to shut it off and just uh, show how little play there is. So the half nuts are actually pretty good on this one too. I haven't had the apron apart, but I believe they're good. It's got the uh, uh, correct uh, clamp for the uh, carriage. So once that's tightened up, that, uh, that moves very little, if at all. There we go. And uh, one can tighten up the... Uh, the uh, gib screws here and, and uh, lock the uh, carriage traverse as well. So, this is Lucas signing off.